Of war and peace, the truth just twists its curfew, gull it glides. Upon four legged forest clouds, the cowboy angel rides. How are you? you let's let's you. talk about how are Let's talk about how you are. How am I? I'm, I'm dying. I mean, everybody is, but I'm doing it. I've accelerated the process, or the process has suddenly accelerated on me, so I'm looking for ways of trying to die more like you, say. Or well, you have no I idea do. how I'm going to die, in point of fact. I've got a slightly better idea, and I will. How are you actually, I mean, this is, this is useful. People will want to know, how do you feel? There are bad days, and then there are worse days. And I'm never quite sure whether the exhaustion comes from the chemotherapy treatment or from the tumor itself. But you, uh, you're writing. Yes, I'm still writing. a pretty fast clip. I can still write and I can still read. Um, and I can still talk, but there, there, are, there are days when it would be, I couldn't, I could only read, say. Well, as a, as a Jewish hypochondriac, I have access to a lot of very, very good medical minds. And we're going to put them all on the case. But part of the, the so-called battle, because you're always supposed to be a struggler with cancer. I don't know why cancer is the only one against which one must battle. You never read people die after a long battle with... Old age. Yeah, after well, a long battle with old after age. Long, but he, was, he battled cancer. Um, uh, I don't know why. This, so this are you, I don't understand, medicine, are you fatalistic? Are you realistic? Um, or are you? I'm, I'm a realist. I'm, I'm objective. I mean, it's, it's not a good cancer to get. No. The statistics are very depressing. Um, Mine isn't just in my this office either. It's gone to my lymph nodes. Um, I would be a very lucky person to live, you know, another five years. Can we bring Martin Amos all into the conversation? Or barely talk. Come in. It's a pleasure to meet oh, you. Yeah, this is this is my my dear, my dearest friend, Martin Amos. Hello, Martin. Um, answer the question that David Wolpe and I were talking about the other day, which is, do you find it insulting for people to pray for you? No, no, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, I take it kindly on the assumption that people are praying for my recovery. Yes, but, but I, that's what I meant. I, many of them said, we're not for you to recover. For not? Not, no, to, but to be saved. Ah, I would imagine that there are an extraordinarily large number of people who are hoping for some uh, a bull yes. to be issued from DuPont Circle saying, yes, I now realize the error of my ways, and I believe in the salvation of Jesus, or something. Well, now might be the time to say, I, I guess, that um, in the event of anyone ever reading or hearing a rumor of any such thing being made, it, wouldn't, it would not have been made by me. Are the you actually worried about I mean, that? The, well, worried the, about people, well, uh, the entity making such a remark might be you know, a raving, terrified um, person who has, whose cancer spread to the brain. I can't guarantee that such an entity wouldn't make such a ridiculous remark, but n n no one recognizable as myself would ever make such a I ridiculous see. Remark. So you're worried about an internal change. Oh, well, that's I, I think, that, as Jeeves says to Bertie Worcester when Bertie says, look, um, I quite see that, Jeeves, but I mean, suppose your family saw you on boat race night in Trafalgar Square in an advanced stage of inebriation, um, waving your trousers in the air, <laughs> and uh, as man servant replies, well, the contingency is a remote one. <laughs> um, no, no, no one who would not answer to the same description would, could possibly say anything. So, do you worry that silly. outsiders will try to? Uh, no, I don't no. think no. There won't be anyone within range. But nothing. I mean, nothing. It, it, this is a very old game. It goes back to Thomas Paine and David Hume and Voltaire, in whose company I have no right to be mentioned. But it was. It's an old game of the religious to either to circulate, even with Darwin, outright lies about death. Let's say, no, no, I know this rumors, is a yeah. or when possible to try and put pressure. I, I asked this. All seriousness, because you have, you're in a new, uh, I hope, uh, impermanent phase of life when you can uh, envision more readily your mortality. I hope, of course, that you step out of that process and come back to us fully. Thank you. You're welcome. When you received your diagnosis, mm -hmm. did you have a moment, a fleeting moment of asking yourself, I wonder if prayer would help? I wonder if there is anything. Uh, no. I can quite safely say that. It may be too early to ask me that. Right. Uh, because I haven't had any terrifying moment yet. And I know that there are some win or lose. I have some very grueling 
things to undergo. Yeah. Yeah. Where I won't, a lot of the time I won't be for chemical and narcotic reasons, I, I won't be quite myself. So I don't right. know that I know the answer is Right, that. right. No, I mean, it's, it's... In the same way as I can absolutely assure you that while you're cornered in Sarajevo and thinking, geez, I wish I hadn't got into this building and how am I going to get back to the hotel? Or pounced on by, but when pounced I'm in those on by fascists in Beirut and other time, or, or fucked up and far from home in Afghanistan where I thought I might, I can absolutely see how I don't get out of this. The foxhole foolishness Quite literally, didn't cross my mind till later. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sort of very slightly to the right of here, John. God, in that um, <laughs> I think the only rational position is to be an agnostic, teetering on the very brink of atheism. Uh, but uh, it's, it's as a as a as a as a safety issue. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. It's just because um, it's it's crammed and irrational to say that there is no God because um, and premature. Because uh, we are pathetically ignorant of the universe. We, we know hardly anything about it. Uh, we don't know what 86% of it consists of. We don't understand galaxy formation. We're a dozen Einsteins, at least, from even a rudimentary understanding of where we are. And to say, I mean, the fact that the universe is more intelligent than us sounds like a proof of something to me. Um, but that it's over our heads. So to say there is no God, I don't, I don't... I would say more like a hypothesis than a proof, but I agree with Marshall. I mean, that's actually why, one of the reasons why, as I explained at the end, why I call my strangely neglected masterpiece, Pitch 22, by that name, because having had many allegiances and commitments in my life till now, I found, reviewing the position when I turned 60, that my strongest commitment is to a group of people whose main interest is in the uncertainty principle and who reject faith because it says it already, it already has enough information. But is there a kind of hubris in the, 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 the certainty of God's non-existence? No. In my certainty that the Pope doesn't know anything more about it than I do, and maybe less. Well, that's a different uh, on subject. That I can, I, on that I can replace well, that's quite a different a lot of subject. There's no, there, is no, there is no class of mammals. There's humility and, and agnosticism that doesn't exist in atheism. The class of mammals who have been given a supernatural revelation and know about God and can only through their acquaintance with the revelation pass on the truth to you. This class does not exist. Class A may be said not. They have nice robes. They need it to cover their absolute nudity. I, so that, on that, that one, I'm, I'm, no, I'm there with you. I have a high confidence in that position. A religion is man-made. God's, all, all the gods found so far have been man-made. It does not say at all that there may not be a prime mover or a higher intelligence. But I say that no one has yet uh, earned any claim to act in that, that entity's well, name. Yeah, well, me, well, no one has the right to tell me what to do because they have a divine one. With his candle lit into the sun, though its glow is waxed in black. All except when neath the trees of Eden.